Hello, I'm Karen Penny and I'm going to teach you a little bit about finishing your tapestries. So when you're finishing your tapestry, you need to turn it over and first of all look to see if there are any of the um, spacing pieces of weft that set out your warp still left within uh, the tapestry. So for instance, I do something called twining and I still have that here. So what I would do is cut the twining away. You can do this by cutting it or you could just try and undo uh, the knot that's here on the end, but personally I just cut through it. But be very careful that you don't actually cut some of the warps themselves. And once you've done that, you essentially are just undoing the twining by using your bobbin just to edge, take that edge away. So we don't need this, this is just supporting the weaving when we're making. And you just pull that away and that's now waste. So once we've taken the twining away, what we next need to do is flat this edge. Flatting the edge gives it a really good solid structure, but also it's quite decorative and allows you for a, a quite a, a smart uh, looking um, edge to the front of your tapestry. But we do the activity of plaiting the ends when the tapestry is facing down. Uh, so this is the back of your tapestry. And one of the easiest ways of doing this is if you have something heavy that you can weight your tapestry down with so it doesn't move around while we're doing it. And I'm going to take the first three warps. So you can see the first three warps. One, two, three. And the one that is here, so it's the outside warp, for me it's on my left and it's going to go over the second one and under the third one in a plaiting sequence. But rather than continue to plait, what I will do now is this thread that's started here on this edge, on this left hand edge that's gone over under, will now pull down reasonably tight and be placed on the back of the tapestry. So you're left with two warp threads. I then pick up the third, a third one essentially on this side and the one on the outside again goes over and under and then gets pulled down tight again onto the back of the tapestry and then you pick another one up on this side and you're taking again this outside left one over under and pull down onto the back and you keep going through this process holding the tension as I say it will help you if you've got something quite heavy sitting on the back of your tapestry just to ensure that it's not going to shift around too much and you just keep going all the way along and obviously the process depending on how skilled you are with your hands um, is just repetitive and as long as you keep the tension the same on all the threads as you go nothing changes as you go along and it is all about, if you want a very neat edge, then it is all about keeping that tension consistent all the way along.
Now when you get to the last three warps, we do something slightly different. So again, we're just carrying on doing this until we get to those last three. So, one down, and now we have these three warps here. I'm just going to adjust that so that that's sitting over the top of all of those threads and weighting my tapestry down. So I have these last three warps here, and again, I'm going to plait these now, actually plait them. So the outer one on the left goes over, under, and personally, I like to hold this quite tight in the corner so that it's, as I say, it keeps it nice and neat. So I'm going to hold that quite tight, especially this very first um, unit couple that I'm going to, going to perform. So again, from the outside, from the left over to the middle. And now I'll just let go of this in a second. Yeah. And now this one over into the centre of that. This is classic plaiting into the centre. The ones on the outside go to the centre. Outside into the centre. Outside into the centre. And you just keep that momentum going with those threads on the outside go to the centre and this thread now on the outside goes to the centre and it just keeps going and I keep making a lovely plait now with these. Now when you feel that's long enough, I'll say about two centimetres, at this point you can, actually I'm not going to use that one, I'm going to use this slightly shorter <laughs> version. You can put a little knot in at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little knot and that's really just to hold it temporarily just so it doesn't all come unraveled. This long end here, I'm just going to cut. And so we can leave this now, um, nothing's going to become unraveled. Uh, but the next thing I would do is actually to sew these ends down, which I'll show you next. So the next stage involves sewing back these uh, threads so that they don't all uh, move around, um, you know, when you're handling your tapestry afterwards. Uh, so, and it just sort of locks them in place. So I use um, a quilting, hand quilting thread from Coates. And this is just really a sort of heavy duty sewing thread. Now, normally uh, in this situation, I would be using this cream uh, colour because it obviously sits, would sit very nicely with the warps um, and disappear. But in this instance, I'm going to be using a thread which is of a slightly darker colour so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pull off sort of just an, an arm's length of uh, thread. Put a little knot in the end. Personally, I put a little double knot. And then I'm using this curved needle, but to be honest with you, you don't need to. It's just something that I like to use. Uh, you could just use a straight needle. And I'm going to attach the thread just in the normal way, really, just get running up uh, through the weaving. So it's not on the front or the back, it's in the middle. Leave my little knot there and I will do all this end at a later date. Not right now, I'll just leave it. And so I'm going to pick up my first thread and I'm just going to take the thread over the top of it and then I will, sorry, sew a little bit towards myself. Again, going down between the weft and 
um, the warp effectively, sort of like in, so it's sort of in the middle of your weaving. So you get a little stitch like that. And now I'm going to go in twos, so I'm going to collect them up in twos and do exactly the same thing. So a little stitch again down underneath the weft, running with the warp. These would obviously not look quite so obvious if I was um, doing this with a light colour. And all this will do is just hold everything in place. So here I've got some weft threads. Um, so I might try and just hold them down at the same time as the warp threads. So I can get all this in the same bundle. And now I've got this tail end and I'm again uh, just going to do exactly the same there and just pull this down onto the back of the weaving and take a little stitch running with the warp. Now if you wish to obviously you could put a few more stitches in that um, just to make sure it's a little bit more secure. Again, now I'm running again down there, uh, the warp. Just to give that a little extra stitch. And to finish, I would run this thread as far down as I could without it being on the front. Through my weaving and down like that. And at some point, I would just cut this thread off. I'm just going again, just taking it a little bit further down. And 
this can just be nipped off. And once you have that and you feel that everything is um, secure, again, this can be trimmed. Then you could uh, cut your warps. So you would just cut them short as they about there all the same length going all the way across um, and then the uh, ends um, obviously won't move around and this will be a nice neat uh, edge. So once you've completed the first end, this one, with the plaiting and the sewing, you then turn your tapestry again face down so you can see the back and start at the other end of your piece.